Today, I wanted to talk about a guy in the Red Wing system who is not currently, at the very time of recording this audio, a Detroit Red Wing. Right now, he's a Grand Rapids Griffin. That might actually change by the time this video gets published a few hours from now, but who really knows? Stevie Y has his own plans, right? But there are a lot of things that you can talk about when it comes to my third favorite team, the Detroit Red Wings themselves. You can talk about the road trip that had just concluded. You could talk about the record on the road trip. Maybe go over the last game that just happened against the Dallas Stars, Dylan Larkin and his giveaway. Very uncharacteristic of him, by the way. But overall, when it comes to this team... I wanted to go out there and focus on a name that we haven't actually seen suit up in a Red Wings jersey in about a month now. He's played in Grand Rapids a little bit, but it's mostly due to conditioning. He was taken out of the lineup a while ago, and now he's back playing pro hockey. Let's go over to the minors and talk about the giant himself. Fee, fi, fo, fum. He is the guy we've been making a ton of videos about over the past few years. It is Elmer Soderblom. Now, Soderblom, as you probably already know, he's a big dude, 6'8", 247 pounds. He is massive, and part of the reason why he has so much lore and love attached to his name is because of his size. You don't normally see 6'8", left wing, right wing, left-handed players going out there and playing the game with the hands and the finesse and the skill that Soderblom has. Add to this the fact that he was a 2019 sixth round selection, meaning that he was taken towards the very end of the draft, and now, three years later, he is in the NHL, or he was at least before getting injured. That makes things even more crazy as well. Not only is this guy huge, to the point that he is so much exponentially larger than everybody else, but he also is a six round pick that worked his way up from the Swedish Junior Leagues into the SHL and eventually made the jump to the NHL right away. He was so good in the preseason, he showed off all of the skills that he had and everybody was super excited because, hey, he's a six foot eight, six round pick. What more can you ask for this guy that is in the realm of peculiarity? But I wanted to make this video today because of an article, or not an article, I should stop referring to these as articles, that's not what they are. A post made on the Detroit Red Wing subreddit by Monsieur A.K. What they did was they asked this question on the subreddit, and I thought it was a really interesting, kind of funny thought process to go out there and put. So this is the post that he had made four days ago. Can Steve Eiserman brainwash Soderblom a clockwork orange style with footage of Tage Thompson? If Soderblom can develop into two-thirds the player that Tage has become, I would be so happy. Now, to those who have not seen A Clockwork Orange, it's probably one of Stanley Kubrick's most vile and savage films out there. i would admittedly been on a little bit of a Kubrick stint the past little while here. The Shining was one of my favorite horror movies growing up. And then, of course, recently, during the Montreal and Canucks video, we talked about how I was watching Eyes Wide Shut the other day. But A Clockwork Orange has a scene where, okay, no, I'm not going to spoil it. Pretty much there's a brainwashing scene going on, and through the means of some very intense metal clamps, I guess you could say, somebody in the movie was forced to watch footage of something else. And the poster here on Reddit is saying, hey, can Stevie Y just go out there and pry Elmer Soderblom's eyeballs open and force him to watch Tage Thompson tape with some opera music playing in the background in order for him to just be that guy. Like, you know, just take all the skills that Tage Thompson has implemented into his game and work things out that way. Of course, this is just kind of joking around, but it pretty much at its core is asking whether or not Soderblom has the potential to become Tage Thompson. Now, for those unaware, which you probably shouldn't be because we've been talking about this guy a ton too, Tage is 6'7", 218, and he's right-handed, so he's a tad shorter than Soderblom is. Soderblom also is a lot heavier than the guy as well, but Tage Thompson is one of the top scorers in the entire NHL today. He's 25 years old, and he's got 41 points in 28 games played, 21 goals, and 20 assists on the year. He's on pace for 121 points and 62 goals in a full 82-game year. Thompson, at the time of recording this audio, is fourth overall in the NHL in total points, and he is third overall in goals. He had overtaken Bo Horvat the other day, which is very unfortunate for my Canucks-loving heart. But of course, Tage Thompson is one of the most impactful, skilled, just crazy overall combinations of a player that we've seen in a very long time. He can dangle the pants off of you, he can make really good passes, he shoots the puck like it's nobody's business, he's got such a powerful wrist shot and one-timer. 
And top it all off, he's huge. So Tage is definitely a unique type of player, but I also wanted to make this point as well because this was discussed in the comment section of the Red Wings subreddit post. But when it comes to what Tage Thompson is right now, Obviously, you would want anybody who is six foot seven or six foot eight to become like Tage Thompson. But the thing with Tage was that he was a first round pick taken all the way back in 2016. He was a St. Louis Blues guy for the longest time, and he was never really able to break out with that organization. Elmer Soderblom right now is 21 years old. When Tage Thompson was in his 21 year old season, he was getting, what is that, 12 points in 65 games played with the Sabres? He had gotten traded over there in the Ryan O'Reilly trade. The Blues won the cup with O'Reilly in their lineup, so they all kind of said it was a good win for them. But Tage Thompson was just one of these extra pieces, a guy added on for the sake of adding a guy in this Sabres trade. He had Sabotka and Berglund, I believe, also added in this mix. But Tage Thompson was not really the guy that people thought it was going to be right off the bat. It took this guy so long after getting drafted in 2016 to become a feasible, actually remotely impactful NHL forward. Last year, he had 68 points in 78 games played, what many people would call his breakout year. That occurred six years after getting drafted, and now... In his seventh year after getting drafted, he is in this stratosphere that only includes other players like Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Jason Robertson. For Elmer Soderblom, this guy was drafted in 2019. It's only been three seasons after he was drafted. Six years after Soderblom would have been drafted, it's going to be, what is that, 2024? So... If you really wanted to make that Tage Thompson, Elmer Soderblom comparison, you have to take a look at the progression and where they've gone since then. When Tage Thompson was 21, he was producing at a pretty similar point production pace as to what Soderblom is doing right now. I mean, 12 points divided by 65 total games with the Sabres, that's a point one eight four points per game. Meanwhile, Elmer Soderblom had two goals in the 13 games that he had, that's a point one five points per game. It's really similar. So realistically, like, I'm not going to go out there and say that in 2025 or 2026, you're going to see Elmer Soderblom putting up a 60-goal year on pace for 120 points. I'm not going to say that in the slightest, but I will say that anything is possible. And when it comes to what Tage Thompson eventually became, I don't think anybody... After seeing him get drafted by the St. Louis Blues in 2016, or after seeing him make his debut with the Blues, or after seeing him get traded from the Blues to the Sabres for Ryan O'Reilly, or after seeing him play a few seasons with the Sabres and not produce all too well, I don't think anybody, after any of these scenarios, went out there and said, oh, in two, three years, the guy's going to be scoring at a 120-point pace. He's going to score at a 60-goal pace. He's going to be in the same point production level as McDavid and Dreisaitl. This guy's going to have heart consideration if the Buffalo Sabres get into the playoffs. It's going to be Skinner. It's going to be Tuck. It's going to be Cousins, all these guys willing them into the dance. And Tage Thompson is going to be at the center of it all because the spotlight is on this guy for very good reason. Elmer Soderblom, I'm not going to say he's not going to do that, but at the same time, who knows? At the end of the day, though, I hope the Alexander Delarge sort of therapy does come in here and maybe try to make itself a little bit of a thing. I mean, of course, I don't want Steve Eisenman to go out there and isolate Soderblom in a room and torture him in any way, but at the same time, just seeing what other big dudes in the National Hockey League are capable of might have some sort of an effect on what Soderblom decides to focus on. Because, I mean, for Elmer, he's not like a super physical, I'm gonna body check the heck out of everybody, I'm a brick wall, bull in a china shop, truculence kind of guy. He just doesn't go out there wrecking people for the sake of wrecking people. He's got some really good hands. He's got some great finesse. You had seen all the through the legs goals he had scored in the World Juniors a few months ago. He's a really talented player. And so, whatever the future holds for Soderblom, I'm very excited to see it. But you can talk to the comments on your thoughts about this Reddit post, the entire idea of Soderblom maybe becoming some sort of a Thompson sometime down the line, whether or not that's a realistic possibility you can see occurring for this team and its development. But talk to the comments either way all your thoughts about Elmer Soderblom. If you are a Sabres fan, talk to me in the comments as well. What was your opinion about Tage Thompson back in 2019, 2020-ish, before he really broke out and after he had gotten acquired from St. Louis? How have your thoughts changed since then, and what do you think was the biggest reason he was able to take the step up that he did to becoming the star that he is now? What changed from 2019 to 2022? Talk in the comments about your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And...
Bye.